Hey y'all, welcome. So today we will be setting up the Verpal KA50 control panel. There has been a new software came out in June about three weeks ago and I want to show you all how to set it up. There was some issues. Uh, first let's start by where to get your software. You're going to go to verpalcontrols.eu. I will put this link down below. Support portal and software. And you can see right here is all the previous editions. Uh, I was running on the one from November. So you just double click it. You will double click this to download it and it'll go into your download files. So this uh, setup version has some bug fixes including virtual access, button mode, soft toggle, and the application crashing on exit. Um, I didn't really have any problems with that, but um, I know that you all have had some problems with the virtual access, so I will show you how to set that up. So get this downloaded and and uh, get it set up and I'll catch you all in the new software. All right, so here we are in the new software. I'm gonna go ahead and get my control panel plugged in. Uh, you will plug this into the USB on your control panel. And we'll wait for that to load real quick. And here it is right here. So we're gonna click on this. Uh, you can see I've actually already updated my firmware, but we'll run through that anyway. Um, my Warbird has not been updated. So you will click on your panel, firmware. We're gonna start firmware update. Okay. Anytime you do new software, you have to do the update to go along with it. So just be patient. We're going to let this run through the firmware settings. Uh, it takes a minute, so just be patient and we'll catch you all when it's done. And here we are. You'll kick you straight over to the profile screen. Just a side note. Um, Verpal does recommend you anytime you do firmware update. I don't know if this is still true. But in the beginning, they recommended you only have one control panel plugged in at a time while during the firmware update. After you firmware update and you're just setting up profiles and buttons, you can have all your devices plugged in. That's that's no problem at all. Um, uh, you can have keyboards and stuff plugged in too. So we are now updated to the latest firmware. We're going to select our VPC oops, base because that's what it is. Then we're going to go down to our different panels. So you have two different options here. You can do joystick mode and slave mode. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to do joystick mode and I will do a separate video on how to set up the slave mode so that you can slave this to your throttle or you can slave a control panel to it also. Um, so we're going to do joystick mode. Device doesn't really matter. It is on my left. Um, I don't think that matters. So no twist, there's no um, twist locks in here anyway, and split by 32 buttons. Um, if you split it by 32 buttons, this is for you um, elite dangerous people that, where elite dangerous only picks up 32 buttons. So if you click that, it'll actually split out your buttons to um, uh, different panels to 32. So we will do create profile, let that write and read. So it just wrote to it and now it's going to read. You can see now that now Windows has picked that up as a new device. So we're going to come up here and adjust our axis. So you can see none of them all the way up is only showing 71. So we want to get these set up. So just calibrate. You're going to go all the way up and down a few times. Make sure it's in the down position when you're done. and save calibration to profile. Let that write, and then it will read. Always write for it to read again. Sometimes you get clicking and click happy. And there you have it. So now your control panel is actually set up and ready to use. Um, you can close this out and jump into your favorite sim game, but hold on. If I'm going to show you guys how to do the access to buttons now. 
So um, first we have, this is all your LEDs. You can go in here and change the color of your LEDs, um, all that stuff, buttons, your shift modes. So let's do, uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're gonna be just looking at, uh, we'll look at the first two axes. So first thing we can do is double click and you can see over here you have access to buttons. So zero to 50, 50% and 100%. That means when this is at 0%, it'll activate a button. When it's at 50%, it'll activate a button. Or when it's at 100%, it'll activate a button. So you can do it that way. Or you can do 0 to 20. So when your handle is at, get this one out of the way. So when your handle is at 0 to 20, it'll activate. And then like 21, you can see we're at 25. So that would activate a button. And you can select however many you want. If you want just one, if you want three. So um, if you're using your CM3 th throttle, which is down here, I know you can't see it, and you want your flap switch to activate buttons, and you wanted three switches, um, we'll just act like this is your flap switch. You can go 0 to 20, 41 to 60, um, and 81 to 100, and go save. Now if we go over here to buttons, you can see nothing happened. So you always have to save your device anytime you make changes like that. So we're going to save it real quick and let it read. And now you can see it activates 49, 50, and 51. Now before you just jump off, you do have to, these are physical buttons. You can see physical button state. Um, so if you jump out right now, these buttons will not show anything up. You'll come down here find your next available open button. You're gonna double click that. And we're gonna tell this physical button, I have my keyboard here, 49. We'll go save and next, leave everything else the way it is. 50, save and next, and we'll do button 51. And save. So now we have these three tied in. You can see they all three are right here. And you want to make sure to always save to your device. If you don't save it, then, then um, it's not going to work. So save, save, save. If we go over to our tester, we can see that this is what Windows sees right here. You can see we, in fact, have button 46, 47, 48. So when you jump into your game, it's going to show it as the left VPC panel, uh, 50 panel, KA 50 panel. And these will be the button numbers. So that's the first way we can set them up. So now let's go ahead and clear everything out. I'm going to get everything cleared out and set back to um, factory and I can show you the second way. Okay, now we're back. We can see we have everything cleared out. Nothing's coming up again. Everything's cleared out over here. So we'll go into Axis. And now we're going to use the customizable ranges here. So you have um, Axis number. So you have one, two, three, and four. Um, all the way up, however high. I don't even know how high they go. Wow, it goes pretty high. Anyway, you have one, two, three, and four. This is one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we're going to be using, we'll do axis one and two this time, and we want them both to do the same thing. So we're going to tell axis one and two, and leave this set to logic. Um, for some reason, when you set it to hardware, it didn't work for me, so... Uh, you just want to leave that set to logic. We're going to say range from 0% to, let's say, 10%. I want a button to activate on both of these, 10%. And then I also want a button to activate at between 90 and 100. So we're going to go 1 and 2 again. So we're selecting these two also. We're telling it at 90% to 100%, you want a button push. So 90 to 100. Okay, and then we're going to save. If you don't save, then when we switch over to buttons, it won't actually show up. Okay, jump into buttons, and now you can see we have 49 and 51 right here, and then we have 51 and 52. So we're going to do the same thing. Come over here to your blank. We're going to tell this button 49, save and next. Button 50, save and next.
button 51, statement next, and button 52. Save. And save. And now what we've done is we've told um, basically Windows the logical buttons that to tie it to the physical buttons here. Doesn't matter if these match or not over here. It's, it really doesn't matter. So now we're going to go to the tester. And remember, this is what Windows sees. So now if we go all the way up, you can see button 46. There's button 48 is down or 48 stays on. So 46. And then we have it that way, too. So you can see now you have both of those turned on. So I hope this helped you all out. Um, I will do another video on how to actually slave your control panel to another one. Uh, I will be slaving my CM3 over to, I know you can't see it, it's over here, but my CM1 that's in front of me. And um, yeah, hope you like this. Hope it helped. Make sure to leave a like if it did help you out and I'll catch you all in the next one.